So welcome to another episode of School of Airway. Today, it's kind of about airway because it's about a drug that we give with airway all the time. So I have a patient coming in as a medical uh, notification for VTAC, stable VTAC. Hmm. This guy has history of VTAC. He's, he has an AICD that's not firing. EMS found him with a heart rate 240 and GP of 80 over 40. You would think they, they shocked him, but they didn't. Uh, they saw his blood pressure low, so they put an IV and gave him a bowl of fluid, maybe 200 cc's, and they started amiodarone. Be careful, amiodarone's number one side effect is not pulmonary fibrosis or thyroid dysfunction because it has an iodine load. It basically does hypotension. So despite that, blood pressure improved like 160 and he's maintaining. I guess because he was maintaining, they thought he was too stable. He was having active chest pain. He has AFib as well. He knows when he has AFib and he gets palpitations. But this felt funny because he felt an out of body experience and he knows that when he has an out of body experience, he's about to pass out. His heart's going so fast, it's like a VTAC. Okay? So, so I'm like, okay. My resident's like, okay, I'll just do uh, cardio for him. So we'll have to sync, right? Um, so something like this. It's okay. So something like this would have to happen, right? And you have to increase your joules to 200. Right? He has pad, he needs pads on, so the pads he had on by EMS are not compatible, and you'd have to sync him, right? You'd have to once you have this on, you'd have to sync the beats because he's still awake. The issue I don't like is he's slowly going from a heart rate of 140, 160 after they gave the amiodarone bolus of 150. Heart rate still covers 150, 160, 180, and then he gets a chest pain again. I don't like that. So you can say Dracarys or light him up, right? Or medical cardio rhythm. I'm gonna tell you this, if he's having active chest pain and it gets a little hypotensive, 100 over something, on a guy who's on blood pressure meds and he's having chest pain, I find a reason to give electricity. So, but we give, before you give electricity, because you can get excited, students and residents and peas, PAs, you get excited about giving the electricity, but you don't think about the patient. And the patient's looking around like, aren't you going to be pain meds? Because he's been cardio before, right? Uh, so basically, either his AFib is being misread with aberrancy, right? SVT with aberrancy with uh, AFib with left bundle, right bundle rest. But this is very regular, what I see on the EKG strip they gave, or it's VTAC. I think you need to get electricity regardless right now. So we gave him a little fentanyl, 50, he wasn't a big guy. And we gave him a time of half the dose, what you usually give, instead of 200, uh, 20 milligrams, uh, 10, because BP was borderline low, right? We push it, he gets cardioverted, and then he starts doing this. The weird thing is the legs aren't moving, right? So imagine this guy, right? He just clenching his jaw all of a sudden now. And of course, his arms flex, but his legs don't. So it's not a seizure. It looks like myoclonus from the time of day. But why don't we mostly, most of the time see it? Because you paralyze him with RSI. With rock or sucks, it's hard to see any type of arrhythmia, like uh, shaking of any type if you're paralyzed, right? So I had to research this. It's not hot, often that it happens. The myoclonus may last one to three minutes. His lasted less than five minutes, definitely. His legs never moved. He was a little sedated, right? Because the, the time I had to wear off, it takes like 10 minutes, right? And the fentanyl, he's a little high, right? Um, if I wanted to prove the point, I could have done a lactic acid or a prolactin level to prove that he didn't have a seizure. But I, I knew that he had taken a time and we and So in the future, how do I prevent this? So I looked it up. So if you're gonna give, and it's really low doses, you just have to give, you have to give it like a minute before you give the other dose. Um, a, a colleague of mine said, give the full dose 20. And I was like, I don't think so. That's not what happens. You have to prime their muscles to prevent the myoclonus from happening. I, this is what, from anesthesia literature. You can give uh, 0.05 milligrams per kilo. So if 0.1 milligrams per kilo, I have to figure that out, right? So guess what? 
The time of day dose is usually 0 0.3. I'm going to have to go, that's 20. So half of that is 1.5. So that's uh, 10, right? And half of that, you're hovering on the 0.5 mark, is on 5. I bet you can get away with like 3 milligrams or 2.5 milligrams. Or if you want to do multiplication table, he's like a 70 kilo guy, right? 0.17. So 3.5 milligrams on this guy perhaps would have been enough to get it first, waited a minute, and then give him the rest of his 10 milligrams. And perhaps the microns would have prevented. That's what a study, that I'm going to refer to the study. So I hadn't seen this before. I knew about it. EMS paramedics I talked about it in New York because they never give paralysis. They're not allowed to give paralysis medicines with uh, their induction agent when they intubate. So they would see it and they'd be like, what's going on? Is he having a seizure? And people who are ignorant don't, don't pay attention, don't read, don't look things up on Google. But if you pay attention, you learn more. So that's just one thing to know about. All right? He gets myoclonus and he gets a time date. Maybe prime his uh, muscles before with a low dose, super low dose, and maybe it won't happen again, according to the anesthesia studies. It's not always about airway, but something close to it. Please come back to another episode of School of Airway.